Hello, and welcome to Williams Mullins Benefits Companion, a podcast that helps employers navigate the complex legal challenges of managing their employee benefit plans. I'm your host, Bryden DeWitt, and today I'll be joined by Burl Ball, Principal Financial Advisor at CapTrust, to discuss Department of Labor cybersecurity guidance. How are you doing today, Burl? Great, Bryden. Glad to be here. Thanks for coming back onto the Benefits Companion. Um, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. Uh, you know, cybersecurity is certainly in the news. Uh, we recently had the, the pipeline that was attacked by with a ransomware attack, and then recently the uh, beef processing company. Uh, so, you know, we're seeing more and more uh, cybersecurity issues arising. And, of course, our clients' plans are, you know, online. Everything is online and electronic, and there's a lot of concern about protecting the, the confidential information and assets, plan assets of, of retirement plans. And recently, the Department of Labor issued not really regulations, but some kind of compliance tips for cybersecurity. Um, and, you know, as you know, it's the guidance is really for, you know, how do you select a service provider and then certain tips for plan sponsors. So what, you know, what do you think are some of the key, you know, items of guidance that came out of these uh, Department of Labor uh, tips? Uh, I'm glad to be able to talk about this. And, and, and it's interesting how the Department of Labor these days has focused a lot on guidance. If we go back a few years, um, you'll remember, Bryden, when they talked about guidance related to target date funds. Um, and that became actually more of a way for employers to really follow and think about target date funds more so than ever before. And I think they're taking that exact same tack when it comes to cybersecurity as well. So they've really focused this on, on really three groups, uh, plan sponsors uh, as fiduciaries. What, what should plan sponsors be doing? Um, secondly, what should your provider or record keeper be doing? And I'm going to try to use those terms interchangeably between provider and record keeper. And then finally, most importantly, what should participants be doing? So they really kind of group these, this guidance um, into three parts. And they, they then took those three parts and divided it into six steps. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what the plan sponsor can do, who's, who's listening to this podcast, um, about what they should first be doing. And, and the first is get with your record keeper and figure out what kind of internal security measures they follow. Um, most of them should have a document that's called a SOC 2, and that stands for their systems and organization control document. There's a third party auditor who should have come in to make sure that they have implemented the right safety and protection for data. Uh, you can ask them some other questions at the same time. Ask them for the document. Um, uh, that's a really good thing to have in your documentation as a plan sponsor to make sure that you've got the information that you need. But then kind of maybe, Bryden, I would suggest asking them, what about their procedures for distributions, for example? I mean, what you don't want is somebody invading one of your participants' accounts and taking out money. So how do they go about making sure that they've got the information they need to make that distribution? Are they following it? You know, what's their process for having passwords change or data uh, updated by a participant? And one of the things I think that is really a great question to ask is, what's a called multi-factor or dual-factor authentication. Uh, just recently at CapTrust, we tried to do a survey of, plan, of providers, record keepers, to say, you know, are you requiring dual-factor authentication? Is it voluntary for participants, et cetera? And so right now, I would say some do and some don't, Brian. Yeah. And, you know, it strikes me that when – Plan fiduciaries were doing their RFP process, that they haven't done one in several years. When the last time they went through this, they probably weren't asking for this 
information. This wasn't really on the radar. There's probably a lot of focus on fees and who the uh, particular account managers would be and all of those things that you think about when who's here, here selecting as your, your record keeper or service provider. But I don't think, you know, I haven't seen cybersecurity in this level of detail into cybersecurity included in that process. So even if, you know, it's a good practice to go through an RFP you know, every three to five years, but even if I think a client's not due for one, asking these questions to kind of update your information about the the service provider is really crucial. And, you know, we, we saw a case last year where a participant's account was raided by hackers um, because the, the HR person was using their personal AOL account and hackers were able to get in and use the withdrawal form to really deplete this person's, the participant's account. And it became clear that that's a fiduciary breach. That's a potential fiduciary breach for planned fiduciaries to not have nailed down the cybersecurity or taken the appropriate steps to make sure that they are you know, having adequate cybersecurity and that also their record keepers and, and service providers. So that's, again, we're seeing... You know, we're going to keep seeing more and more activity and threats in the cybersecurity area, and it's a fiduciary risk. It is indeed. And so some other documents I think people should check when they're asking those questions. Find out about have there been any past incidents with your record keeper? Uh, right. Has there been any litigation against them? Uh, and, and what does your service agreement say? Um, there are now, I, I, I'm aware of record keepers who have uh, put in their service agreement uh, that they will indemnify the plan sponsor against a security breach. And I've also seen for participants that some record keepers will guarantee that they will make the account whole. So those are some specifics that you should be, as, as a plan sponsor, really looking for. And, and there's one more. There, there's some record keepers right now who offer some third party services like access to credit information or student loan payoff or wellness. Uh, is your record keeping or providing data, participant data to those third parties? All right. Um, and, and if so, uh, does that add another layer of potential security breach to what they're doing? Um, and finally, I think one of the things you can do is you probably have some fiduciary insurance protection. You might want to ask your insurance broker about cybersecurity plan protection as well and encourage your participants at the same time to use that dual factor authentication, check their account, make sure they're looking at uh, their accounts and, and on a regular basis so they know where their assets are. Yeah, that's key for the participants themselves to monitor their own accounts. Uh, and these are all really the guidance that the Department of Labor put out. These are the steps that they recommended. Uh, make sure that you're asking the questions. You know if you're protected. You know if you're indemnified. You know if your participants are. Uh, as litigious as things get, if, if fraud happens, it won't be just the record keeper or provider likely on the hook. Right. Well, thank you, Burl, so much for uh, coming on to the Benefits Companion. That'll wrap up our discussion. If you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please contact me. You can also visit our employee benefits page at williamsmullen.com slash employee benefits. There you can find out more about our team as well as past episodes of this podcast and legal alerts. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast to be notified when our next episode posts. Thanks for listening.